Okay, I think that we all know why I am here today. After posting Changeling the Lost, I got a lot of comments, I got a lot of likes and views, and once again I want to say thank you all so much for watching, thank you all so much for liking my videos and subscribing to me. However, I definitely got my fair share of comments that said that the review fell flat for about the same reason. Well, except for this Instagram bot, I suppose, who says that I deserve a promotion. How, how am I going to promote myself? What the hell do you think this is? Either way, I accept the fact that you're right. I did not talk about the book as much as that I as much as I should have, and really, I'm going to at least stick by the part that I think that the more interesting narrative is how Changely Lost came to be as big as it was, which is what the video was about. However, I completely understand that really a lot of people come to these videos for analysis of a game as well as reviews for a game, which I admittedly did not bring. So consider this little special to be a uh, mea culpa, so to speak. And I really want to give people who watch my videos and make constructive criticisms like that and uh, uh, to, to let their voices be heard, if I've made a mistake, I would like to correct it. In this case, I've gotten enough comments that I think it merits just a little bit more of an analysis for Changeling the Lost. So consider this to be just a quick video about Changeling the Lost, the things that I left out, namely how the dice system works with Changeling the Lost, the mythos, and how it differs from Changeling the Dreaming. Okay, let's start off with Changeling the Lost and what it actually is. I did touch upon this in the video, but I really feel that I probably could have talked about a little bit more what Changeling the Lost is. And really, it's a fantastic story. It's one of the best narratives you would see, and it's also probably the one that is most connected to Fey mythology. It has a really dark beauty to it, and the story basically goes is that you take on the role of a person who was kidnapped by fey creatures and brought into Arcadia, over the hedge into Arcadia. And somehow, some way, whichever way that the storyteller feels like telling it, you all have managed to escape back over the hedge and into the real world. However, by sheer virtue of going into Arcadia, you have been forever changed by your experience, and now you live a sort of quasi-life of half-human, half-fey creature. And the real crux of the game is not only dealing with other fey creatures in this world, dealing with the antagonist, but coming to terms with the fact that you are something new, that your experience has irreparably changed you. And there's really a lot of great stories behind this and a lot of subtext to it. In particular, I think it's a really great allegory, let's say, for something like PTSD and post-traumatic stress disorder and how you handle certain traumatic events in your life. And I think this is a really good game that can give you a positive outlet for some of those feelings as well. In particular, the understanding of going through a traumatic event and being forever changed by it and living with the fact that you have been changed by this experience. I also very much connect it to... I would not connect the two, but there is a different story here. I think of watching something be destroyed, but something beautiful come out from it. And I wanted to make a clear distinction between the PTSD part and this part, because I don't want them to connect to one another or have anybody think that I'm trying to connect the dots between the two. However, I'm just seeing two different kind of stories that can be brought up here. The second one is a possible other story of just dark beauty or seeing something beautiful and something terrible. I like it a lot of changing the loss in the experience to something like watching a building catch on fire and watching it burn to the ground under the caveat of knowing that nobody was injured or harmed or killed in the building. You just know that a building's being burned down. And really the way that I see this is that you're watching something that is old, something that brings a lot of people either joy or purpose be demolished. And the thing is, is that even though this is a very sad and tragic event, you know that 
something beautiful is going to come from it, that progress will take forward and the building will be rebuilt or will be built into something new, it will be built into something better. And I liken that a lot to Changeling the Lost and how a character goes through their experience. Um, namely speaking of a human being taken over the hedge into Arcadia. They are forever changed by this. Their, who they once were is gone, and now it's a matter of who they are now. And really, you can kind of build it into either being sad by what was lost, or you could see the joy in what is new. And I think that's really the best stories that you can find in Changeling the Lost, the symbolic narratives, the dark beauty, as well as potentially working out certain problems or working out, or given an outlet for certain experiences. The way that this really changed for Changeling the Dreaming and Changeling the Lost is that Changeling the Dreaming was a fantastic game that was just a little too obtuse for some people, or it was a little too bright in the world of darkness world, and also it lacked that real transformation moment, because a lot of the games in World of Darkness really rely on the death of the old person and the rebirth into something new, in particular with Vampire, which even takes on a more literal understanding of that terminology. And with a lack of that, I feel like Changing the Dreaming was, once again, on the cusp of something great, because Changing the Dreaming is a fantastic game, but it just needed to be reworked, and I think Change and the Lost was the true successor. It was what needed to happen. And really, all things considered, Changeling the Dreaming is a fantastic game. Changeling the Lost is a monumentally important and fantastic game. And I did talk a lot about this in my other video, so I'm not going to harp on this one for too long. I'll move on to the next area. The next one that I left out but I alluded to was the dice system, how it changed, and how this really fits Changeling the Lost the most, and I quickly find that I don't talk about the dice systems for World of Darkness too much, and there is a reason for that. Is that because they all are connected, they all use a similar dice system, only changing certain areas. And both of the dice systems, Old World and New World, are phenomenal. So I even said in one of my first videos I ever made, Beast the Primordial, that the reason I don't talk about dice systems for World of Darkness too much is because it's already written off, it's already been checked off as a plus, no matter what game I talk about. So if I give a negative review to Geist the Sin Eater, let's say, which I did, it still has the check mark that it has a great dice system by sheer fact of using the World of Darkness dice system. But I think I did need a bit of a further elaboration here in that I said very positive things about the dice system connecting to Changeling the Lost. And I'm going to use this opportunity to talk about the how the New World system was better than the Old World one, and how it really connects to Changeling. When it comes to the Old World of Darkness system, I still really like it, but the fact of the matter is, is that it got a little too convoluted at the end there. Whenever Merits and Flaws got added in, that was a whole other set of things that you had to keep track of. A lot of the times you would house rule it or you'd let people police their own merits and flaws, but there was just so many, you create so many, you had to keep track of each one. Um, mix this in with the fact that whenever it came to attributes and abilities, they started to grow a little too wide as well. And really, it didn't reach the point of Call of Cthulhu, where you could put ranks in scuba without putting any ranks in swim, but with all the abilities out there, you quickly realize that some didn't get used as much as others, there were others that could have been combined into something else, and it just felt like an overly convoluted system from time to time, even though I want to stress once again, I love the Old World Darkness system, I actually like that aspect of it, however, I can see how that became a bit of a flaw. 
with New World of Darkness, they got rid of the ones take away successes rule, which really was a good thing. As much as I really like the idea of ones taking away from successes, I think everyone who has story told at least one World of Darkness game knows how much of a pain in ass it is to explain that concept to people, and it still takes them about an entire session and a half to fully grasp just what it means that a success is taken away if you roll a one. They simply cut it down to nines and tens. They cut down rolling to moments that require nine and ten successes instead of setting the success bar as a storyteller. They streamlined the abilities and the attributes, and really it was just a better, more concise and streamlined system. Now the reason that Changeling the Lost connected the most with that is that it was the game... Harking back to what I've said about it in my review is that it was the game that was the most new world of darkness. Whenever you would talk about Vampire the Requiem versus Vampire the Masquerade, people would bring up they like this dice system or they like the disciplines in this one compared to, you know, the powers in Requiem. And the same can be said for just about everything. But with Changeling the Lost to Changeling the Dreaming, really everything just sort of fit, and people were very quick to be like, no, this system is unquestionably better than the old one. It works better. The story's better. The Sorry, the story's not necessarily better, but it's more streamlined. It makes a little bit more sense. The dice system works well with it, and I think it's these blends that really make Changeling the Lost such a fantastic and phenomenal game. I hope you enjoyed my rambling there of... The things that I sort of left out of my Changeling the Lost video, and consider this to be an add-on for that purpose. So, once again, thank you all so much for watching. Please like and subscribe for more. And please check out TanerReviewsAndProjectDerail.com.